East, A-Rod's hitting 300, and they have the best record in baseball. And I think we all know why. Cracker Jack. At the start of the season, they replaced the Cracker Jack at the concession stand at Yankee Stadium with Crunch and Munch. Now, Crunch and Munch is a fine product. I happen to like it myself, but it's not in the song. They don't sing Buy Me Some Peanuts and Crunch and Munch at the seventh inning stretch. After protests from the fans, Cracker Jack is back, and so are the Yankees. And former Yankee Alfonso Soriano was also back Friday night for the first time as a Ranger, and they still got love for him in the Bronx. Yeah. Soriano, so Top first, first at bat for Soriano. Kevin Brown gets him to ground out to A-Rod. How's that? Soriano to A-Rod. Third inning. Two on for Soriano, scoreless game, not anymore. Three run home run off Kevin Brown, puts the Rangers up 3-0. Soriano two for four, three RBI. Brown, seven hits, six runs, and six innings of work. Bottom third, 4 nothing Rangers. Derek Jeter running out an infield single, but he would leave the game with tightness in his left groin. Yanks hope to have him back by Tuesday. Kenny Rogers, well, he came in 8-2 this year, but his last seven decisions against the Yankees, all L's. Bernie Williams touching him up there. Enrique Wilson solo shot. Then A-Rod. Then Gary Sheffield. Then Hideki Matsui. Rogers had given up four home runs and 11 starts, gave up five home runs Friday night. Bottom six, tied at six, Jay Powell to Sheffield. His second of the game, eighth of the season, six home runs in the game for the Yankees. They hold on to win it, 7-6. I told you it was a Cracker Jack. Red Sox started Friday two and a half back of the Yanks and visiting the Royals. Bottom four, Royals up two, two outs, one on for Angel Barroa. Facing Tim Wakefield. Down the line, Joe Randa coming in to score. Barroa on his horse around for a triple. And it's 3 nothing Royals. Jimmy Gobble through five innings and giving up one hit, no runs. Royals the only major league team that hadn't pitched a shutout this season. Top six. Reds down five, Doug Mirabelli. Gobbles that one up, and there goes the shutout. Solo shot for Mirabelli. Red Sox on the board on Mirabelli's fourth of the season. Same inning, two on for David Ortiz. That's well hit. That'll be plenty to get Johnny Damon home. Mark Bellhorn trying to get a little greedy, and he gets caught up in a rundown. Benito Santiago will tag him out. So now they're two away. Next batter, Manny with Ortiz at second. And no drama here. Just a pop-up for Manny. Royals win at 5-2. Sox have dropped four in a row. Houston at St. Louis. Why Tony La Russa had the seat he did in a moment. You remain seated. You know Jeff Bagwell and Craig Biggio. They're like baseball's version of bosom buddies. Bags has driven in Bidge 357 times in the last 30 years. 358 now. Astros up 2-0 on the RBI single by Bagwell. Bottom five, Wade Miller making his fourth start already this season against St. Louis. So he's very familiar with Albert Pujols. Even more so after this at bat. He was ahead in the count, three balls, no strikes. We're now full, and we're going to remain that way for an 11-pitch at bat. You want to be careful with Pujols because he's been killing the ball and he eventually draws the one out walk and that brings up Scott Rowland game tied game untied two run single major league leading 57 RBIs 354 average for the man with the golden glove cards of one eight of nine five three in this one now La Russa not in the dugout for the game the St. Louis skipper told to sit for two games for getting into a beef with Pirates manager Lloyd McClendon McClendon begin his benching Saturday. McClendon took exception with La Russa yelling at one of his Pirate players. Guesses about when Mark Pryor might return for the Cubs, but Friday, the guessing stopped and Pryor returned from those elbow and Achilles injuries to face the Pirates. Pryor, Pryor making his season debut after two months on the disabled list. First time he started at Wrigley since game six of the NLCS versus the Marlins last October. Wrigley Field welcomes Mark Pryor starring in Quest for Pryor. The summer blockbuster Cup fans have been waiting to see. Gets Craig Wilson at the top of the second, then Rob Koyak just looking. Top third, Jose Castillo down. Then top four, Pryor strikes out Jason Kendall. Then Darrell Ward, he pops up. Pryor still perfect after four innings. He threw 85 pitches, 55 for strikes. Retired the first 13 batters he faced. Top five, still no score. Rob Koyak with the base hit. First hit for the Pirates in the game. Bottom five now, still no score, two outs. Todd Walker, Tyke Redmond, give me some glove. 
Redmond's catch steals Walker's chance of getting his 1,000th hit. Top six. Two outs, one on for Fryer. He gets Jack Wilson to end the inning. Six innings of work, two hits, eight Ks. Here's his reaction. I wasn't going to lie. I mean, it was, you know, I had some anxiety going, and I was a little, probably a little nervous going into it. Um, you know, kind of finally hitting the stride a little bit. You know, there's some th still some things I need to work on, but, you know, for the most part, it was pretty good. Two on, two Bottom eight now, still no score. Two on, two outs for Todd Hollinsworth. Moises Alou coming around to score. The Cubs take the one nothing lead. Top nine, Joe Borowski pitching for Chicago. Kendall thinks he's got something. Moises Alou does have something, and it's Kendall's would-be base hit. Dusty Baker's digging it. Later, top nine, one on, two outs, Craig Wilson. Base hit to bring Jack Wilson home. That'll tie the game in one. Mike Rillinger now pitching for Chicago. Chris Steins with a shot. That'll bring Wilson home. And the Pirates take the 2-1 lead. Cubs trying to tie it in the bottom of the ninth. Runner on third, two outs for Corey Patterson. But that's not going to get it done. Pirates win it 2-1. And Jeff Brantley breaks down his own review of Pryor's performance. Dodgers and the Diamondbacks. Casey Fossum starting for the Diamondbacks. Top third, 2-1-1 on, out. 2-1 Diamondbacks. Fossum to Paul LaDuca into the seats. The Duke is third of the year. Fossum, four innings of work, eight hits, five earned runs. Dodgers got four in the third on four hits. Top seven, LaDuca up again. Looks like another home run, but Luis Gonzalez says, I think not. Not exactly Darius Miles hops, but enough for Gonzalez to get up and make the catch. Top nine, still 5-3. Dodgers looking for a little insurance, and like a good neighbor, Jason Worth is there. Off the foul pole, his first of the season. It's L.A. 7-3, the final. To the great Northwest, Chicago at Seattle. Frank Thomas, buck 55, career batting average at Seattle's yard when play began Friday. Freddie Garcia, 185 ERA at home. Advantage Thomas in the top of the fourth. Two-run shot, 430 career. White Sox take the lead. By the way, the White Sox lost outfielder Maglio Ordonez for four to seven weeks with a knee injury. Carlos Lee, though, he extends his hit streak to an AL leading 20 games. Oakland at Anaheim. Tribe has lost three straight. Angels have won three in a row. Vlad Guerrero, he's batting 615 with 12 RBI in his last three games. That was the first pitch he saw from Jason Davis. Foul ball off his bat behind his head. Guerrero swinging everything. Strikes out there. Bottom two, two on Angels. Sean Figgins facing Davis with one on, and that's deep to left center. And Figgins is wearing his PF Flyers. He's going to end up with a triple. Eighth triple of the year leads the majors. Figgins, a home run shy of the cycle. Then again, he only has one career big league homer. Top four, Alex Escobar against Aaron Seeley and Raul Mondesi with a crazy little thing called glove. See what says that? Thank you, brother. Bottom seven, Angels Jose Guillen takes David Risky's 3-0 pitch out of the park, and uh, Guillen is staring down Risky, and we we may have issues. Oh, there he finally said something, and then the up comes out and says, hey. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Risky says, uh, Risky not happy with the way Guillen left the batter's box, and, well, all the fellas leave the dugout and come out. No punches are thrown. Top eight, Ronnie Belliard. There's your game-winning punch. Off F-Rod, Francisco Rodriguez, a three-run shot. His first of the year. First homer given up by K-Rod this year. And the Indians win the ball game. 9-6. Blue Jays and A's from Oakland, where the A's had won eight straight. Top third, no score. Rich Harden pitching to Alexis Rios. Over to Harden. Up top. And in time, seven innings of work, four hits, one earned run for Hart. Bottom third, Josh Towers now pitching to Scott Hatterberg and more stellar D. This time, compliments of Reed Johnson. Towers, seven innings of work, six hits, one run, but he got by with a little help from his friends. Nice effort by Johnson. How about some run support now? Top eight, game tied at one, Chad Bradford to Eric Hinsky with two outs, and that makes this a clutch home run. Number five for Hinsky, he was two for four, three RBI. Jays win at 6-1. to one. They've won 8 of 11. Giants and Rockies from Colorado. Jason Schmidt 6-0 and over the 1.73 ERA in his last seven starts. Giants down 2 nothing. Bottom first, Schmidt facing Jeremy Burnett's down swinging. Next batter, Charles Johnson swinging as well. Schmidt gets out of the inning, giving up two runs. Six innings of work, two earned runs, nine Ks. Top five game tied. Barry Bonds facing Jeff Facero. First pitch, curveball strike right over the plate. <laughs> Next pitch, oh, oh, same pitch, oh, oh. <laughs> and now it's a souvenir. 
two-run shot for Barry as he wraps it around the foul pole. He had three home runs in four games against the Rockies last weekend. Clint Hurdle said he wouldn't pitch to him unless he had to. I guess he had to. Number 15 of the season, number 673 for his career. Three batters later, A.J. Brzezinski up. He says, you know what? I'll have what Barry had. Giants win at 13-7. Schmidt has won seven straight decisions then. NL Central leading Cincinnati, hosting Montreal. we got three former Cincinnati high school stars playing, including Zach Day, the Expos pitcher. He's a 95 graduate of LaSalle High. He could use some run support. Uh, he could use a guy like Ken Griffey Jr., five home runs away from 500, 17 RBI in his last 13 games. And, of course, Griffey, an 87 graduate of Moeller High School. Day against Griffey, and he walks. Griffey went one for two, two walks. And, well, the next batter, crack, back, trick, jack. Adam Dunn takes Day Yard, two-run homer, his 15th, and the Reds up 2-0. Top seven, we're tied at two, and there's your tie-breaking shot. Brad Wilkerson, who grew up in Kentucky but came to a lot of Reds games as a kid, had a lot of fans in the stands. Two home runs in this game, four home runs in, in four games against Cincinnati this season. Our, our third Cincinnati native is Barry Larkin. He pinch hit. He went to Moeller High School, 82 grad. Bottom nine, 4-2 Expos, two outs, runners on the corner. Barry Larkin checked the swing, didn't matter. They rung him up, and the Expos win. Matt LaCroix at the plate. One hopper. Wow. By D and double play. That's going to get an ESPN highlight. How'd they know? Take another look. Carlos Guillen makes a very athletic play at second base. And they turn the DP. <laughs> Top eight now. Game tied at two. Dimitri Young up now. Broken bat. Diving grab. With Jim all the way here by Koski. I guess they didn't get enough airtime on the broadcast. Yeah. Take another look. Young robbed by third baseman Corey Koski. Great leaping catch. Game still tied at two. Bottom nine, one out. Torrey Hunter with a chance to win the game. Hit well. Left field. White is back. It's gone. And Minnesota wins it on a walk-off. Torrey Hunter home run. And what do you know? That's on ESPN as well. Hunter with a walk-off home run. He's digging it, and the Twins take it 3-2. Tampa Bay hasn't won three straight on the road in nearly a year. They're at Baltimore trying to accomplish that. Harold Reynolds, he gives us the inside scoop on Melvin Mora. Melvin Mora is one of the best fastball hitters in the game. You challenge him with the fastball, he will make you pay. His other strengths, hits the ball to all fields. You can hit it to left field, right field, center field. Great back control. And then the thing that stands out in my mind more than anything else is very unusual power. He can take you out of the ballpark. Well, Mora began the night tied with Kansas City's Ken Harvey for the AL lead with a 379 batting average. This will not hurt it. Up Victor Zambrano in the third. It's a grand slam, first career grand slam, and 45 at bats. And saw Rocco Baldelli try to go over the wall in center. 5 4 Devil Rays tied, top 11. Julio Lugo, his fourth hit. Miguel Tejada falls down, no E right there. And then Lugo safe at second on the pitch out. Mike Dijon then goes wild past Javi Lopez. Lugo's on third base. And that brings up the crime dog. One out. And that finds space. Lugo scores. And Pinella's club wins a rare one on the road. 8-7. Half games uh, within two and a half games of Florida in the NL East, including host New York. Steve Traxel, four and one, a 111 ERA at home this season. Uh, Damian Easley doesn't care. RBI double off Traxel. Marlins up three ones. Traxel four runs in five and a third. Bottom six, four one. Todd Zeal robbed by Luis Castile over to Easley, finishing the double play. Uh, let's have a warm New York Met welcome for former closer Armando Benitez. Uh, but first, just one reason why maybe the Mets fans uh, aren't going to give him a warm reception. Game one, 2000 World Series. Benitez blows the saves. Mets go on to lose the series. But, but all's forgiven, right? And thoroughly treated like an enemy by the Shea faithful. Well, Benitez will get zeal right here. He retired four straight batters. Hitters are 0 for their last 40 against them. Armando Benitez, 21st save. And the Marlins win the ball game, 5-1. Philadelphia at Atlanta, these are the other two in our NL East tight foursome. 
But Bobby Abreu, just two RBI in his last 10 games. He matches that in the top of the first off Travis Smith with the two-run homer, his 12th of the season. The Phillies up 2-0. Eric Milton, 6-1 with a 4.08 ERA this season. Beat Atlanta on Sunday. What about Friday, J.B.? The biggest reason that Eric Milton is successful is because he has great command of the strike zone, both on the outside corner of the plate with his fastball and his changeup to right-handed hitters. It really allows him to change speeds well and keep those hitters off balance. But the biggest reason that he's successful is he never panics when he has runners in scoring position. They you listen to JB, you're a whole lot smarter. It's Mike Hessman. It's Raphael for call. Andrew Jones, Milton, seven innings, five hits, one earn, five Ks. Top eight, bases loaded. Pat Burl. Jesse Garcia can't get a glove on it. And the Braves, major league leading 50th there, and the Phillies, 9-1 win.